and go. Frustrated? Banging your head against a wall? Make life work for you. Not against you. With rain said. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. Okay. You ready? Welcome back to Dare to Be Better with Ray and Sid. We figured it out. Mm -hmm. I'm Ray. I'm Sid. Okay. <laughs> it only took us a week, but we figured it out. <laughs> we figured it out. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Last week, we introduced ourselves. Mm -hmm. And if anybody decided to come back, we thank you for that. Mm -hmm. This week, we'll be talking about making your life better. Yeah. And how are we going to do that? Well, what was our title? The title was how to make how to make life work for, for you. you and not against you. There you go. It That's was it was right in the title card. I could have looked at the screen, but I'm trying to be professional here. <laughs> but that's what we're talking about and what i think is quite brilliant is you know and again everybody has everybody has their hiccups everybody has their issues some people need medication some people need therapy whatever people do right so i'm not saying somebody should do something over something else mm -hmm. i am saying however point of view is absolutely everything so if if an individual starts feeling like their life isn't what they went, oh, oh, I know, this is a perfect example. All right, so I was listening to the radio, another show, and they were talking about um, people who take advantage of other people and how to set boundaries. That's where they were trying to get to. Okay. And the very first thing they were talking about was that um, this one son, he's about 40, was upset because... His father, who's probably, I don't know, 70 or 80, right, wants him to come weekly to help him at his house. The son, who's 40, was very upset that he felt like his dad was taking advantage of him and, you know, blah, blah, blah. So the DJ comes in and he says, yeah, you know, the people who take advantage of us the most is often our family. Family, of course. Mm -hmm. And he was saying that, um, yeah, I agree with you. He was agreeing with the caller. You shouldn't have to go out to help your father every week. It's an hour out and an hour back. And that that's just be taking advantage of you. So then I did a little bit of thinking on that. And isn't it about point of view? Because if, just hypothetically, if this individual, the 40-year-old son, were to choose to take on a different point of view, which is, wow, what a gift. What an opportunity I have to spend time with my father. He's not going to be around much longer, Especially right? Especially at 70, 80 years old. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you start counting the days and... Yeah, right, exactly. And this father gave him his life, right? All right. those years so that this guy could turn out to be 40 with a family. So maybe it's maybe it's not that his father is taking advantage of him. Maybe it's more about choosing the point of view. I was going to say once a week doesn't really sound like that's unreasonable. And if it's worked out where, you know, you have it on a schedule, how is it really taking advantage? I mean, if it's every day, if, if you agree on once a week mm -hmm. and then it's like, well, can you come twice a week? Can you, and then it becomes every day. Right. right. Then you can say, okay, listen, you know, mm -hmm. you're an hour away. That's two hours each way. Mm -hmm. Or round trip, rather. And, you know, now it's an all-day thing. Yeah. So, And I do think it is also um, approach, right? Of if, course. If it is about, hey, you know, Dad, I want to spend time with you. I want quality time with you. So I'm going to make time on Saturdays to come out for an hour or two or whatever that is. We're going to do as many things as we can. And that way I'm not coming out every day where I feel pressured and rushed right. because I want to spend quality time. So I think that uh, this topic that we've chosen, it really is about how you make life work for you is based upon much of it, point of view, right? In every situation. And 
I am a firm believer that, have you heard of A Reason, A Season, A Lifetime? No, it's okay. like a book or a movie or, mm -mm. no? So this is how I live, okay? So A Reason, A Season, A Lifetime. A Reason, when you go to the grocery store and someone helps you with your groceries. Right. A Lifetime, your children, your parents, some friends, some partners. Seasonal people, 100% valuable. They teach you forgiveness. Maybe they teach you patience, love, friendship. They bring you children, whatever those things are, okay? The seasonal person is not meant to be in your life forever. The seasonal person gives their gift, and then they must move on. And sometimes they move on silently. Sometimes they move on aggressively. But it's transitional, like they're they move there on. for a period. Mm -hmm. And the biggest downfall is that when a seasonal person moves on, we like to try to reel them back in like, oh, right. oh you need to come back. You didn't give me enough. Sometimes it's just not natural mm -hmm. because they've served their purpose, so to speak. Correct. And yeah, now they're on to, now you'll have other people come in your life. Think of how many people you've met in your lifetime. Yeah. And you can't spend every day with every person. It's impossible. That would just be crazy thinking, right? So if more people would allow those people to leave instead of stepping back and going, oh, look what he did or look how she treated me. Instead going, okay, what was the gift? I'm going to master the gift. I'm going to better myself because of the gift so that they gifted me with the ability to become a better person because they were in my life rather than you know, a more defeated person because they left. So life really has a program and a process to it. You know, there's there's ways to live life and feel fulfilled and feel like you are setting your boundaries and feel like it is what you choose it to be. But that only comes by the choice of what point of view you're going to take. Yeah, definitely. You know? I think, you know, you talked about... Um, Reasons and um, reasons and seasons. Here I am. Season, I'm like, reason, a lifetime. <laughs> I'm singing Christmas carols here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just I pulled a sit. I lost my train of thought. I know. I saw your eyes dart left to right, left to right, and I'm like, what oh, no. happened? And I can't help you. You know, if you lose your train of thought, I can't help you. It's already contagious. Yeah, I won't be able to return. We'll just sit and look at each other. Thirty minutes of deer in headlights. Thank you. <laughs> but. um so many people do it without even thinking about it. They're making their life harder. Life is working against them. Right. And they're always cutting against the grain. They're constantly, you see it in everything. Mm -hmm. You know, with diets, with, you know, trying the same thing time in, time out. Um, relationships, mm -hmm. you know, just the same approach. You know these things have failed and you just, you won't abandon them. You're just too stubborn. What is it exactly? Yeah. I don't know, but you, okay, I'm telling, you know how I'll tell a story like 12 times mm -hmm. and you're so good. You just keep letting me. I do it. that too because my, but I asked somebody, did I tell you this story already? Do you remember yeah. this story? Yeah. And then, but you're good to go, oh, you've heard it and then you stop. I'll play it dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I just keep going, but I'm telling I you that same the story. story. Sometimes they're great stories and they're worth repeating. Okay. I'm going to repeat one because maybe these guys. They haven't heard, guys it. haven't heard it. Maybe you guys haven't heard it. Okay. So. I told him I've heard it. Okay, okay, so. <laughs> Never oh, forgot the story. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, oh, okay, this is the story. The story is this. Remember the one where, because I have severe dyslexia, right. okay? And when I say I have dyslexia, I, it's kind of a thing for me. If someone goes, oh, I have it too. No, no, mm. no, no, no. I didn't start reading until I was 24 years old, right. okay? And um, can't, I still, I barely know half and full and empty. Well, I know those because that's in a gas, my gas tank. I don't know numbers. You could tell positions, yeah. Yeah, okay. The stop so, sign is octagonal and it's red. Yeah, and yeah. I just learned that you stop at that. I didn't right. know what the sign said. So STOP means spin tires on pavement, right? Oh my gosh, how did you know that? That's what I always did. See? Yeah. I was watching. You were watching? So um, when I was in middle school, and again, I have to reiterate, my dad was this all-American concrete guy, a guy's guy. And um, at that time, again, the only kid around that had brown skin, you know. Then on top of it, I couldn't read. I couldn't do math, blah, blah, blah. 
found myself in this remedial class. I told you this, all four walls were glass. Ridiculous. In the, in the middle of the library, every child has to walk past that room to get to their next class. And I remember sitting in there with like five, five other kids thinking, oh my gosh. You knew it already. Oh, if my mom and dad find out I'm in here, I am just dead. So all of a sudden, I hear this ruckus out in, out in the lobby, and the library doors swing open and walks in my dad. And he was built. He was strong. He's 6'2", you know. And behind him comes this little principal that was all maybe 5'9", five, 5'10", five, in his khaki pants that were floods, okay? Nice. And he's yelling, sir, sir, you can't just come into this school at will, right? So my dad walks up to this all glass room and swings the door open and he says, DJ, always called me DJ, DJ, come here. And you're going, what did I do? Oh, I just felt like my life was coming to an end. So I walk up, he puts his big old arm around me and he turns me to face the principal and the principal's standing with his hands on his hips, you know, and he says, um, he goes, so sir, to the principal, can you do a double back? At the time I was training for the Olympics in gymnastics and soccer, okay? And the principal goes, I don't even know what that is. Of course I can. So my dad says, well, that's exactly what my point is. She can, but she's not punishing you for something she can do, but you can't. But rather, you are punishing her for your inability to teach more than one way. Right. And he says to him, if we ever have this problem again, you and I are going to have words, okay? You're never to put my daughter in if, another if room. If lucky, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You'll pray for words. Because my dad was a big, strong guy, and I'm yeah. sure that principal was a little frightened over that, yeah. you know, especially way back then. So um, he says, if I ever find out my daughter's been treated as dumb, slow, or stupid ever again, you and I are going to have words. So he, he walks me out to the parking lot, and my dad turns me, and I'm, I'm looking at him, and he has my, his hands on my shoulders, and he says, DJ, today is the beginning of the rest of your life. We are never going to talk about the things you cannot do, the things you can't overcome, the things you have no talent for, and the things that you do not have a passion for. Those things can never create greatness, happiness, balance, fulfillment. We will only discuss the things you can do, the things you can overcome, things you have talent in, passion for, and the things you can learn to do. And he says, so you have to learn to read and write and do math. I'm going to help you. But from now on, we only talk about the things that make you valuable, you have passion for and talent in. And I'm going to tell you, Ray, it changed me. It literally changed me in that moment because he held his word. We never, ever talked about what I couldn't do, ever. He only talked about what I could. And he raised a girl that easily could have been from a third world country, brown skin, low confidence, no ability to read or do math. I mean, a girl to grow up to be a woman with zero confidence, right? Instead, I've grown up to be a woman with confidence for 30 people. Each time I tell the story, I have it more. It gets more, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm adding people. It was a dozen, then yeah. it was 20. And now I'm to 30, but it is because I'm an old dog. And I will tell you, that lesson was all about point of view, right? It was all about point of view. So from that very young age, that mm -hmm. was instilled in you, and you know we don't do it every single day but for the most part you know it you have that structure mm -hmm. you remember what your dad told you and you know it's working for you yeah because you're not putting yourself at a disadvantage correct enough people in life will do that anyway oh. you don't need to help it alone <laughs> And I know somebody that's just, you know, I know a we lot know of somebody, yeah. but there's a few that really love to pull me down. But what's brilliant is knowing that people don't pull you down because it's a personal attack. No. People typically, if they're going to yank on pull you down, it's, an, they're, it's their own individual stuff, right? Well, it's their stuff. If they're miserable or if they're feeling inadequate you know, or whatever, right, there's no confidence. You know, they don't want to see somebody like you who's confident in their skin and you're the cock of the walk and you're... Oh, I've never heard know. that before. Yeah. Well, I learned so much from you. Cock of the walk is probably more of a rooster thing, so that's more me. Okay. Of course, I don't have the red... Uh, right. Know, well, that's good. ...plumage anymore. <laughs> never had red plumage. You mean, with age, does that just sort of drip off? Well, for me, it did, you know. Yeah. Male pattern baldness, yeah, that happened. Yeah, okay. But uh, that's okay. Um, I don't know if I'd want a big red uh, mohawk anyway. 
No. I'm 50 I really now. don't. Yeah, you're almost going to be 50 Uno. Well, yeah, eventually. Yeah. You know that drives me crazy. Not, not with you, but people will say, I'm going to be 51. Yeah, in 10 months. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, you'll be 100 one day. You'll be dead one day. Yeah. I'm, I just true. took a left turn, but... Okay, uh, it doesn't matter, because I didn't even know where we were. That's okay. We were talking about being the cock of the walk. Mm -hmm. See what happens? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but I have to say this. This is partly what I really love about you, is when I met you from day one, because I am always throwing out ideas. You know, I'm pitching, like, almost 24-7. And you never, ever say no, because your point of view is not based upon what you don't have time for. It's not based upon what you can't do or what you don't want to do. Your total point of view is, what do you want? What are you striving for? What? How can it help you and maybe your family, right? You're always looking at what it is that is the plus that comes from it, and then you make your decision based upon that. And right. I, it's, it's quite um, intriguing. Well, you have to at some point realize that if somebody's calling on you for something they see something in you mm -hmm. i mean they could just be using you taking advantage of you too and that happens sure it happens a lot actually you know the further up i get in life i notice okay you can see that kind of coming but that's okay yeah but when you pitch something to me you know sometimes i go okay this is a wild idea but it's okay because you have to look ahead three steps because I know you're thinking three steps ahead. Oh my gosh, I know. I learned that. Yes, and you're so patient with it because, and the things that I pitch you, they're, they're not little. They're no. not, it's not like, hey, I think that um, we should, I don't know, I can't even think little. <laughs> well, you have to remember, like, you know, when I'm home, I'm drowning in estrogen. So that part doesn't scare me. Right. Um, I have no fear of hell anymore either. Well, <laughs> That sort of hand in hand. <laughs> hand, in hand. <laughs> but, you know, to your point, I know where it's coming from. And again, with the theme of today's show, bettering yourself, I know it's always going to be something that's going to put you in a lane where, you know, you're on the fast track to something great. Mm -hmm. And and let me tell you, though, what else you do that's pretty um, impressive. So I'll make my head even bigger, uh, sure. Mm -hmm. Because, again, it's about point of view, though. That's what the point is, is right. that... I pitch you something, and when I pitch you, I'll pitch you a, a black jet, a personal black jet. That We'll pitch that big, right? Sure. Something that's huge. And I can feel and see like the wheels turning, and you don't say no. What you say is, you know what? I think we should archive that. I like jets. Mm-hmm. I, like, I think you know. we should archive that. That's very smart because as soon as you say no, and again, my dad would say this all the time, DJ, never say no. If right. something comes to you, opportunity comes to you, as, and you feel inspired, right? You feel hopeful. You feel a little intrigued about that. Immediately say yes. Because when you say yes, you put yourself in the driver's seat. Right. Now you can go home and do what you do. Hmm, maybe that doesn't fit us right now, but we could archive it. Right. Or I really like that idea. Maybe we can alter this or that, right? But if you were to say no the second I pitch, You've taken yourself out of the game, right? You're right. you're not even in the passenger seat anymore. So, point of view. It's all about learning that when something comes at you, it's it's not a downer. And that fear of, oh, I can't do it. We're not saying we have to do that in 24 months, right? It is about going, hmm, I'm going to take a different point of view. Is it intriguing to me? Does it ground me? Do, do I feel excited about that? Okay. I'm going to say yes to it, and then I'm going to problem solve to figure out how does that work in my life? What do I do to to feel balanced in the situation? Point of view. Right. Mm -hmm. And when you pitch something, mm -hmm. how long does it usually, you know, um, cook? I couldn't think of a, a different uh, description, but how long does it... Um, gel in your head like how long how long you do you have these ideas do they pop up automatically yeah yeah and and i live life only based upon i so regardless if you believe in life god or the universe whatever your belief is right 
So, personally, I believe in God, but everyone can believe in what they choose to believe in. But when I feel inspired, I know that my God, who whatever that is, has all the experiences, all the everything that needs to be in line, in line. So, the second I feel inspired, I move on it. I don't question, I don't doubt, I don't pause. Because... If I wait two hours, two days, two years, all of those things that life got in the universe put in line for me are not going to be in line. And right. the deal is you got to move immediately, not on what's logical, but what's on inspired. Because if you move immediately on inspiration, you're going to find your life falls together more often, smoother. And so when immediately when I get an idea like, with you and again i'm pitching to you all the time all the time kids. all the time <laughs> like 24 7 i will immediately text you or call you and because i do know when that inspiration like when i kind of sit up a little more or i feel <gasps> like that oh <gasps> i know immediately that's something that life god in the universe has planned for me to do so if i if i step up immediately Usually the player, if it's you, falls right into place. Now, that doesn't mean I'm doing it next week. It means maybe Ray is a part of it, but he's going to archive it for me. Yeah. But if I don't talk about it... It's cataloged, yeah. Mm-hmm. Remember this idea? Let's, let's go back to this in 24 months, because right now, obviously, maybe it's not the time. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, to have long-term goals, to me, you know, is to... You know, plan to be living a long time and a good life. Mm -hmm. Now, what about people who um, they set out to do something, they don't get it done, and now they're beating themselves up over it because they didn't reach that goal? I mean, I've been that person. I know that, mm -hmm. you know. And then I've learned where it's like, well, all right, I wanted to lose 15 pounds, let's say. Okay. And maybe I only lost 10. You have to look at it and say, well, I lost 10. I mean, look at the net gain there. Right. And so I was married for 15 years and my ex-husband would always say to me, you're always swinging for the fences, but you're never succeeding. And I said to him, maybe in your eyes, I'm not succeeding. But when I swing for the fence 100% of the time, if I take a moment, there's something that just educated me because we're all in life college, right? This is all we're doing is life college. So... If we go and look at each experience, did it teach us patience? Did it teach us understanding? Whatever it did, it taught us something. So that swinging for the fence didn't mean that I failed because maybe the home run wasn't what was meant for that project, whatever I was swinging for the fence for. Maybe that project is like going to college, right? When I go to college to be a surgeon, Every time I go into every class, I may not like the producer or, sorry, the professor. I may not really love the class, but the point is I'm learning something in every class and I have to have those experiences to be the type of surgeon I want to be. Or otherwise, when that person's laying on that table and it's time to do surgery, what do we do? Because I don't Plus, have the life skill. You use the baseball reference, which is right up my alley. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you are missing the ball all the time, and you're looking to hit a home run and you hit a ball all the way to the warning track and it was four feet short of the fence and you say well i didn't hit that home run yeah but you hit that ball 375 feet another five or ten feet it would have been a home run right so look how hard you hit the ball whereas before you were missing it by two feet right and you sort of step back and go what do i have to get that extra five feet or whatever what do right. i have to do different exactly point of view Everything is, it seems like it comes back to the point of view. Oh, I, I love it. I absolutely love it. Yeah, like I said, anytime you want to make a point, use a baseball reference. Okay. And I'll get it. Okay. But that was perfect, though. When you said, because again, this is something my ex-husband and I would have disagreements about all the time. And I would say, but, you know, I'm, I was only five feet away from the fence right. that time. Yeah, but you didn't hit a home run. Okay, but now all I have to do is problem solve that last five feet. Right. All I have to do now is alter point of view because his point of view was... You didn't hit the home run. You didn't hit the home run, right. so you might as well give up. Right. If more people thought that way, 
you know, where I met most of my goal, that should inspire you to mm -hmm. say, hey, I almost made it. A little more oomph, and I'm yeah. going to be there. Instead of, well, I didn't make my goal. See, what a waste of time. Yeah, what a waste of time. I have to say one more thing because I know we're getting close. But so um, I was talking to an individual. I have like a Sundance project that I'm working on. And this individual says to me, yeah, but Sid, do you know how many people apply for Sundance? Because he is a, a, a cinematographer. Okay? Okay. He's a cinematographer. And I go, I don't really care. But if you'd like to show me the numbers or tell me the numbers, that's fine. He goes, you know, whatever, 5,500, whatever that was. And he goes, it's just, it's mind boggling. He says, I've tried once. Okay. He goes, I've tried once and I've applied for Sundance and it didn't work. And I go, so you're done? Well, it was that's such done. a waste of time. And I go, well, One it's time. a waste of time. Yeah. If you're looking, point of view again, if you're looking at everything you didn't get, everything that made you angry, everything that was quote unquote unfair, but is it a waste of time if you step back and go, all right, all right, what did I learn? Okay, I need to alter this slightly. My film needs to be shot this way. Um, I need to hire this type of crew and go for it again because now you have something to base this journey off of. I said, so it's only a waste of time if you choose to have the point of view based upon a waste of time or you know, yeah what you what you could do differently right you know colonel sanders we always talk about him yes heard no oh, a thousand times come on now and you see his face the first thing you think of is yeah i could use some chicken yeah and they would say in things like oh, what kind of moron would open a chicken only restaurant you're only going to serve chicken what are you insane yeah and you said that he was quite old right he was already yeah like in his upper years when uh, he finally you know when his ship came in so to speak come or his, uh, on when his chickens came home to roost right yeah yeah and look the guy kept going yeah and going but i do have to tell you this so as i i can't remember when we mentioned this but i pitched it to you about this show right oh yeah do you know Oh, gosh, when I have to go back and count the years, <laughs> I've been on the earth a long time. But just let me count for five seconds, please. Okay, we can do that. 30 years. 30 years. 30 years. I have been looking for that partner for a talk show. That's a lot of pressure, you know. <laughs> no, pretend like you haven't heard it. Just shh, shh. But... 30 years and what my point is is that uh, I could have been like most people which is because I've attempted with several other people it just didn't work out and it's okay wow. but what I learned each time it didn't work out what I was looking for more of right or what didn't work in these other people so that when when Ray Powers came along I would know it because if I didn't go back and if I was looking at, well, look, that one failed and that one failed and that one failed, then I'm missing the point. Right. You found out how not to do a show. Mm -hmm. And who didn't work for me. Right. Who, why they didn't gel with me. And so when the opportunity came around and I, I felt it, I saw it because I was prepared. That's all called point of view. Right? Of course. Dug my heels in and I was just awaiting. And lucky you. <laughs> lucky me. <laughs> well, they say Edison or Tesla, whoever, you know, came up with the light bulb. I guess there's always tension with the electricity and who came up with what. But, you know, every time something failed, Edison would say, you know, I found another way not to make a light bulb. Yeah. This is another way we found out this won't work. Correct. There is one way it will work and we will find it. But, you know, until then, mm -hmm. every time something blows up in your face, literally or figuratively, all right, that's how not to do it. Right. And that's going to be a big manual of how not to do things. Yeah. Especially. And those are important to know. Of course. It's just like we talked about doing photo shoots, doing um, anything you do with recipes. There's one right way to do it or one best way to do it. And to get to that point, you know, you burn a lot of batches of biscuits and things like that and... Yeah. 
you have to uh, be able to fail and not be afraid to fail. Yeah, because really, and I'm a firm believer in this, people don't, well, failure only happens when you stop trying, That's right. right? Otherwise, you fall down, you stand up, you brush off, and you move on. That's all it is. Opportunity to get up again and reorganize yourself. Try a different way, you know? You only fail when you just stop. I forgot if it was Henry Ford or not. I'm going back to the turn of the century again, that century. He's credited with saying it with um, one of those oh, no. platitudes. No, no. it's you remember? It's nothing bad. Yeah, I think oh. it is. I think I remember anyway. He said, uh, whether you think you can or can't, you're right. Correct. So somebody said that. So we don't know. <laughs> That's okay. I'm going to credit Henry Ford just because... I've got a Ford in my driveway, so... Yeah, then you not? should. Just credit him. There you go. I mean, not? out of everything. Just I credit know. him. I know I didn't come up with it, or I'd have it on a t-shirt. I know. Gosh. But can you believe we blew through another 30 minutes? Oh, really? We did. <laughs> we we tend to ramble and talk and just go on and on. Are you still with us? I hope so. Oh, yeah. Hey, out there. And I hope you'll join us next week when we talk about another I don't way. Know. To, we'll talk about something. We'll figure something out. Yeah. But it's always good in life when you can dare to be better. With Ray and Sid. <gasps> okay. We'll see you next week. See ya. Hey, thanks for checking us out. If you enjoyed the show, like the video, subscribe to this channel, and please tell your friends. We'd also love it if you headed over to daretobebettershow.com for tons of cool photos, extras, and a chance to shop for some sweet show swag. <laughs> say that five times fast. I can barely say it once. If you keep coming, we'll keep delivering. Thanks again.